So I love how, I love how I always say I'm gonna like vlog more and do more vlogs and how I should do this and I just don't ever fucking do it. Like I'm in San Francisco y'all and I have not said a word, turned this camera on not once. Like just do your job, literally do your job. <laughs> something that I actually have not been able to figure out myself. I mean, I know why, obviously, but I think I just needed some time away from everything. Um, as you know, the last year has been, it's actually been one year, y'all, one year since everything went bloom, and that's my life exploding. Um, I think it was June of 2023. I made like, I'm not even joking. I made $200 that month. 200 that's it so yeah <laughs> that's the bush that makes sense and it's been a year it's been literally a year since my entire life changed and you're probably wondering like okay okay it's been a year what's like where are we with this are we we're not in the same place obviously we're not because bitch i literally said i'm in san francisco you know not off of 200 so obviously we're not there that's not what was going on and that's not what's happening anymore but like where are we you know Today, I think that I compartmentalize this, maybe not in the best way, but I feel like I am not as far along as I wanted to be or that I thought I would be a year later now. Like, I thought, I think going into all of this or when all of this sort of went down, that my life would kind of go back to, like, how it was. Like, there was something to go back to. Does that make sense? And the reality is, is that, bitch, that life is gone. Like, done. Over. It was, you enjoyed it. You had the time. It went, doo -doo -doo. You're, not coming, you're, not, you're not gonna go, you can't go back. <laughs> that's the, that's, and that's the problem. Setting my expectation that I think that things are gonna go back to normal. Whereas, like, th this is normal now, bitch. This is, this is what it is. <laughs> so what do I mean by that? I mean, like, in all facets of life, rather. So, like, not really job-wise, but more so, like, health money money is honestly no fuck everything else money is the biggest thing because i think that you know everyone says how money doesn't do this and money doesn't do this and it's not happiness and it's not that that's all like honestly bullshit 100 percent, and i will stand by that forever because <laughs> it's literally the answer to every single problem that you could possibly have almost every single problem and i'm not saying that like i have not been in like, obviously, I struggled with mental illnesses, obviously, and I've been depressed. And at that times when I was depressed, you know, money was not like, the problem or whatever. But it also was used to therefore make it better. Like, I was depressed. Money was, like, used to make my, like, to help out, bitch. When you don't have it, then you're fucked. You're, like, literally fucked. <laughs> um, and I think that's been the biggest thing grappling with. And it's past... So it's been the biggest thing I've had to grapple with this year in the sense of like, I've never been in this position ever in my life. And that might sound pretentious or that might sound whatever. I don't care how the fuck it sounds. It's just, it's what it is. Um, and it was a humbling wake up call in the sense that like, bitch, like, what, like, this is what everyone's been complaining about. <laughs> uh, I think, like, there are certain things, like, for example, health insurance. I've never had to think about health insurance. People, I've always had health insurance. I have health insurance now, obviously. Um, well, not obviously, but I've never had to think about it. I've never had to, like, it's been a thing that's been around um, until, like, obviously I got severed from disability and lost the job. Then, obviously, health insurance went away with the job, and I could have kept it, but in order to keep it, it was like $700 a month. So, things like that. Let's say you're working your job, like most people fucking do, and you're used to having a certain number of, like, money come in each month, and then, like, you get fired all of a sudden. You have no disability. You have no fucking un unemployment. You have nothing. Your cards, your credit cards are still going to be due. Everything is still going to be due. Your rent is still going to be due. So what do you do about that? Well, you get another job, right? Okay, you can't find a job to match your old income. So what do you do from there? Well, <laughs> that's the question. That's sort of what I was left with. It wasn't that like, 
I'm going to Starbucks. It wasn't that like, oh, I enjoy to go shopping. It wasn't that like, oh, I enjoy like finer things in life because honestly, people think that I spend so much money on things and it's like, I don't see a Gucci bag, a Louis Vuitton bag, a designer anything. Like, I don't know what the fuck y'all think I'm buying when I go shopping. It's Hollister and Abercrombie, bitch. <laughs> like they're not, and like maybe Macy's. Um, point being is that like my parents, family, blah, 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 people in general would think that that's like the reason why. And it's like, no, it's because I had to figure out how to pay things that like were no longer there. And it's like my budgeting of my life was already high. So when I moved into my apartment, for example, my apartment's rent was 2633. Like when you get, when you move into an apartment, you know, they pull up credit scores and they, sometimes they do it kind of fucked up in a way, but no, they just ran my social. They saw my tax returns and they were like, okay, cool. You're approved. Like you don't, you can't really, unless you're lying completely, you can't just move into an apartment unless you can afford it. Point being is that I can afford, I could afford that when I moved into the apartment. When I moved into the apartment, it was fine, bitch. It was when I didn't have the money anymore that was like, oh, well, now what do we do? Well, we can move, cost money to move, but like, what do we do? Because you don't have the money and you're not making enough money to like fill that and every single month, all the money that you are making goes to rent. So then what do you do with all the credit cards? And then it's like, well, why do you have so many credit cards? It's like, no, 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 maybe, whatever. But like, I had no problem paying it beforehand. Does that make sense? So it's that. That's what I think has been the biggest thing I've been grappling with, like in terms of perception and like, getting people out of my head. <laughs> the other side of things though, is that <laughs> bitch, we were kind of bad with money. Um, <laughs> like that is something that we do have to face. So it's like a twofold thing. Like you weren't the best with money and this is the wake up call to maybe get better with money. But it was more so like how you used the money. It wasn't that I didn't have money or I wasn't saving. It was more so what are you doing with the money that you are making? For example, in 2022, I made like close to 130,000 or $130,000 was coming in. Where the fuck is that money? Because like I said, I don't have any Gucci, Louis. I don't have, I didn't buy things. I didn't go on like, extravagant trips. So where is the money? That's the question. That's more so what I'm, that's, that's something I do recognize and I do reflect on, but it's not what people think. It's not like I'm going shopping and what other people think and all the shit that they say. It's something else. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. It's something else. It's like, how do I, like, where's the money? I don't know. So it's not just on them and what they're, they're, they're not all wrong, but they are wrong. So let me take a step back because I feel like maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, when I talk about like, yes, people are wrong. Money's like the number one issue for everything and it solves all your problems. I, I stand behind that, like I said. But I think, where was I going with this? Um, oh, I think for myself in terms of just like it being a shock and being a wake up call, I was never wealthy like growing up i was never wealthy never like at like i was never wealthy when we think about wealth like if y'all know what wealth is and y'all have seen it personally i saw it in college like wealth i was never up there um but i was definitely upper middle class and i've recognized that in the sense that certain things i just have never had to deal with and that privilege shattered so it wasn't just like bitch we can't pay bills and that sucks obviously it was more so like a, cult, like not a cultural shock. It was a, um, it was a shock, just in general. A shock like, oh fuck, this is how like America, this is all the, this is the shit y'all be protesting over? Like, oh my fucking God, this is insane. This is like how people are expected to live in this country. Um, and by that, I mean like the whole insurances thing. Like I am like, on disability, I have mental illness. I am unable to get certain jobs or I'm unable to put myself in positions to make more money. But in order to like help myself, I need to spend money to like even do that. So like, to get onto disability or to keep my disability going, which eventually it didn't, it couldn't keep it going. It's because I had to pay 300 bucks every single doctor visit in order to keep that going because I didn't have insurance. So it's like, great, the little money that I do have, it's just like shit like that, it like traps you, it traps you. Um, and that's something that I think that I just was not prepared for, number one, because I've never had, like I said, think about insurances, no. I've never had to think about like, oh, we're not eating out tonight. And I know that sounds strange, but it's like, I don't, you think consciously like, okay, maybe I should eat at home, maybe save some money in that way, but you don't think literally like, should I go to dinner or should I choose to pay off this bill? I've never had to think that way. Or I've never had to say like, oh, we can't go 
conversations? Then conversations like that did happen. So those conversations about Starbucks, that's when I like started having those conversations with myself because it was like, oh bitch, you really can't afford this. Or like, you really can't afford to go here because you had to put gas in your car. And these were the things that I had never thought about beforehand. So all the things that people thought that like, was my were my money problems started to become my money problems because I didn't cut maybe where I needed to cut. If that makes sense because I like I was in shock. Like bitch, you can't like. What do you mean you can't go somewhere because you can't afford gas? That's wild to me. Like, that's wild. I've never had to. You always have gas. You just put gas in the car. <laughs> and I apologize for anybody out there who this. I know how this sounds and I know how privileged this sounds and I am just trying to own up to it because. That's how I felt, sorry, but we've learned. I'm trying to think of other examples of like what this shock was like. Um, and I feel like I'm doing a, doing a really bad job of it. Where I lived, for example, where I could live. I've never, I remember telling my parents, again, also just being like, what the fuck? There's never been a question as to like where I can live. I can live, I mean, obviously you can't live in a giant ass mansion or penthouse, but the area in which I live has never been a problem. Like I can live where the fuck I wanna live, it doesn't matter. This was the first time where I was like, oh no, you have to like leave this neighborhood because you can't afford this neighborhood anymore. You can't live in these neighborhoods. You have to live in this neighborhood or you have to live in this type of apartment. I've never had to face that before. Um, and I think that does a lot of things to you. Obviously you don't get the things that you want or the things that you're used to or the things that you need, but that's not the shock. The shock is more so the people that you're associating with, the people that you're around, the people that you hang out with, your family, your friends, all of those people are still in that life, theoretically, because that's the life that you did have. So having to, for example, leave your neighborhood, you're leaving the neighborhood that you know, all the things that you know, all the people you know, all the friends that you know, everything's there. You're, you're leaving your home, you're leaving your community. So while it sounds on the surface like, oh, I have to leave, I wasn't, I don't live in Beverly Hills, or live. You know what bucket it is. You know what bucket it is. I have to leave my posh buckhead apartment and I, I can't be there anymore. And I have to like live out in the suburbs, blah, 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 blah. Well, it sounds like that. It's more so like, oh no, I have to like leave everything I've known and I've done, gotten used to and the people I see and hang out with. That's what it's like. Like, it's not about the luxuriousness of it all. It was just that like, I lost familiarity of everything. Um, and like the inability to get it back. Like that's what was making me my mood go down or my, my sadness or my loneliness is because I had to literally isolate myself because I had no choice, bitch. Like, bye. Felt very, very much like Hunger Games, like. <laughs> oh. Which is crazy because that's, I mean, that's just a testament to this is America. It wasn't having to physically leave the neighborhood or like having to move out and like move away. It was the fact that like I have to think about going to dinners. I can't go to di like brunch all the time, or I can't go out to the clubs because like either I don't have the money literally, or like it just doesn't make sense financially. And like, what do you what do you do with that? I mean, what do you do with that? Like, you can't do anything um, because it got to a point where it was like, okay, I can't keep asking people to pick me up. I can't keep asking people to pay for me. Like, my friends did a really great job. Some of them didn't even try. <laughs> they were no longer friends, and I don't blame them for that, but it was like, you realize who your true friends are. But you, like, you just kind of have to sit with your poorness and your shit and be like, okay, what are we gonna do? So I think I got stuck in that. I got stuck of like, I could not let it go, and I thought that there was gonna be some return. Like I was very much so like, well, as soon as I get back to this, as soon as I get back to that, and I didn't, like accept it fully. Um, and it's not that like things couldn't go back to that, but it's like my apartment's gone. Those things are gone. Like I could recreate them and mock them, but it's just like that there is no going back to normal. That there is no normal, this is normal. And I was stuck in that for a very, very long time and trying to still not go back, but I was still trying to like Ubering every single weekend back to that neighborhood, back to see my friends and spending outrageous amounts of money on trying to keep up with that lifestyle, not for appearances, but like, I wanna be included, I wanna be seen, I wanna be like, I wanna go to dinners and like hang out at the bars and I wanna do things, I wanna have fun. Um, and now, only now, a year later, coming to terms with like, you can't. <laughs> if you want to have some type of a life in the future, then you gotta just like, eh, you know, eh, um, and that sucks, but what you gonna do about it?
but the good news and all of that, the good news is not that, you know, like while it sucked and while it's like, it's been some shock and while I've been depressed at times and like, it's been fucking terrible. Here's the good news. Here's the good news. Cause there is some good news. Sorry y'all, I'm trying to go to Starbucks and get this shit out. But like, of course, you know, my ADHD is terrible. And I, I just, y'all know how I get ready and y'all know that's what's going on right now. The good news in all this is that it's made me really see like what happiness means and what it means to be happy and the things that you need to appreciate in life. For instance, um, taking the bus, taking the train, having to take public transportation. I made it a thing in my life because growing up in Chicago, I had to do it all the time and I fucking hated it. And honestly, I have trauma from this fucking L. I said, I'm never doing that again. So I have started taking public transportation for the first time in, for the first time since 2014 is like, I've now started to take it more regularly. And it's not because I think it's like I'm above it or anything. That's what people think. They're like, they hear me say it and they're like, oh, what are you too good for? And I'm like, no, because public transportation elsewhere is actually amazing. It's just that being in Atlanta, it fucking sucks. Point being is that I saw that as such a, oh, it takes me forever to get places. Um, it takes me to go three hours to go anywhere. I'm tired. I can't go. I, like, I feel isolated, blah, blah, blah. All these like, problems, right? When the reality is, is that bitch, that's your reality. So like, you can look at it that way, or you can think of it as, hey, I have at least something because bitches in Nebraska and I guess I could just say my own state, Georgia, in the middle of nowhere, don't have anything. They literally can't go anywhere. Like they, they don't they don't have a car, you can't go anywhere. That would suck. Um I also can think about like, hey, you have time to decompress in the morning, listen to your music, like on your walks from the train to your train. Like things that those are the things that bring happiness. And while it sucks to be on a train and having to wait for it and wait for the buses and it, they don't always come and sometimes they stop running. It's not all bad. It's not all bad. <laughs> like when I'm waiting for a bus or the train in the morning or whatever it is, I just think like, hey, the sun's coming up, the sun's going down, there's birds chirping, like this is a nice walk. Life is beautiful. Life is great. Stop being a sad bitch. <laughs> um, so it's made me appreciate, not to sound too cliche, the finer things in life. You know? Like I flew American and I'm flying Frontier back from this little trip here. And I am dreading having to fly Frontier back, but it's like, bitch, it's fine. It's fine. You're fine. <laughs> so I don't know. I hope all that makes sense to y'all, but it's time to go get Starbucks, which I don't drink as I used to, as y'all know, because I have my head my little issue, but I'm treating myself because I need fucking coffee that's done correctly.